This is a print pression B6 folio. And what's really cool about it is you could get rings or in my instance, I am using a disc bound that you could pull out um, and go from there. So there is a back pocket here. Then you have the secretarial pocket and then I have it still like set up for like fall. Um, I mean, it is November, but I'm itching to get Christmas set up, but um, this is what I have. I did get some water damage, um, so that's why a lot of these things are um, a little, have some ink bleeding, but it's still cute and I really like this. I just have to show, look how cute that is with the little pug. A um, little journaling card from Scribble Prince Co. Um, so it's cute aesthetic with that. So that's why I would say it's a little more flexible just because the I think the cardboard in the planner got a little wet. But that's okay. So we're just actually moving it out of the way just to make it a little easier um, for this video. So this is my B6 ring. I've been using a B6 ring for some time but on more of the personal home reference catch-all planner but now I have this size for my plotting planner. Um, I did make the uh, what is this the covers myself so I did this that's on that side and then what did I have on same thing so that's the that print and that's the back of it so I do have that. Um, so we are starting off. So I don't have the tabs labeled, but they kind of go over. Um, the first one is like genre, and then I think it goes into character. So any character development stuff, um, or is this the premise? This might be the premise one. Um, yeah. So it's genre, premise, characters, a uh, plot theme and then I have this extra one which I don't have anything in the back and then on this top or the side tabs there are six so it's perfect for doing a six book series or my instance I'm doing four so I have the last two for extra but so we're starting off is I have um this cute little clip in it um I was supposed to be working on the Star Spangled Strangler um for my cozy mysteries but I <laughs> Haven't done that, so that's kind of why this is clipped here, but this is Ghost Flirtation, so this is my first um, of the series, so I have that. Um, and then we got our little game board, in case I want to do the word count that way, and Daily Camp Tracker. Uh, these were from Sarah Cannon for Heart Breathings, um, from her like uh, Preptober sheet. So now we're moving on to the genre, so I got this cute... Um, foiled spooky thing um on actually it's like on trace paper because I was curious to know what how my printer would do and it actually took it okay so on this genre these are worksheets from um Grant Ferguson on the trellis method and they're really great prompts um and what I'm have here is on paranormal romance so the genre um all that kind of information like key scenes that i think needs right the lovers meet the kiss the show vulnerability the lovers break up show proof of love and lovers reunite so this is right for the romance genre um you got your protagonist so most of the time it's going to be a human for the female and supernatural for the male but i might change that up um in the instance so this is kind of just going over I printed it kind of strangely so it's a little wonky but that's okay um different subplots so right um and then a little bit about theme which has its own tab then still in the genre I got the whole um how to plan and write a series this is from Sarah Kim for heart breathings um and this is for the series that I am currently going to be working on. Um, I'm currently working on it, but um, it's future tense as well. <laughs> um, so they, it is a standalone series. So each book um, you could read out of order and 
Um, there were our characters that tie in, so that's kind of like the fun part. So I have this. Um, I got my characters kind of going off, so I have like a female human, and my ghost is a male. Um, so I'm doing alternating point POV. So this kind of just walks you through um, your whole series. Um, and then, right, my series are, so I started fleshing out some of the tropes, which moves on to this next one. So I have my four stories here and just kind of listing out what tropes I wanted to do. So, right, for the first one, I'm doing like a forced proximity. So there's going to be a shared living arrangement. Um, and I am reading a book here. And so that's why this one, um, I think I got to it first or whatnot. So that's why there's a little bit more on that. Um, but so this is kind of where I'm going to take notes for any trope related stuff. Um, right. Character, storyline, relational, and setting. Kind of just series planner, um, series overview, story arc. Now moving on to the second part, which is the premise. So same thing. I got this kind of question air. I didn't really actually, um, answer them because I feel like it just takes a lot of a lot of time and my brain's already thinking of the story not necessarily what um like these deeper things which I feel like these are great if you have more of a in-depth story but mine's very superficial um so my my series arc here so going over like the conflict the po plot over of the couple why they resist each other why they must overcome and the resolution so that's that then moving on to the characters so I have been taking notes. This is from Kim Wyland's um, crafting character arcs. So just kind of going over like the first act, um, the meet cute, when they get together, the act two, midpoint, all that stuff. So these are things to think about. Um, and they kind of go into my plotting wall, which um, I have made some progress on. So that's then this is my male perspective. Um, some more things from heart breathings, more character snapshots. This was, I think, a lot of information um, and a little redundant. So I think I'm going to kind of take bits and pieces. So that's why um, I do want to kind of make my own um, plotting worksheet um, for what works for me since I'm just kind of using a little bit of everyone's and I want everything just to be more cohesive. So I got that. Then we got our inner profile. This is from Ann Sage. Um, next is on, I think, plot. So I kind of just have broke down of sequences. So there's like six sequences and sequence is a series of scenes. Um, so like sequence one, chapter one, like setting of ordinary world of the hero, something happens, interrupts the main world, a change, a new challenge, um, to be added. Um, so just some notes on different, um, plot beats for a romance, for short romance. Got some more prompts here. I kind of stopped because I was like, eh. I don't really care about the setting, like, the character's influence. So that's that. So then we get into theme. Um, just a few little things on theme. It's not my strong suit. And then got Brainstorm in uh, the last tab. Now, moving on to the side tabs. So for the side tabs is each story has a overview sheet. This is from Heartbreathings as well. I use a lot of her resources. Super awesome. So make sure you sign up to her newsletter to get access to this. But so I have the writing plan and then I have her, um, what was it? The working outline. This was from last year's because that's why it says NaNoWriMo. But this year's now just says um, the working outline for the rough draft challenge. My rough draft challenge. So I got the cover sheet essentially. Then this goes over kind of the basics. 
And then we have the outline. So I'm going through that and I do have it almost completed. Or did I actually complete it? If I could actually flip it. Oh, I guess I did. Huh. I guess I finished outlining uh, my first story. So that's pretty cool. There are some blanks just because I don't think they're necessary. This is very, right? I'm writing 10,000 words, so it's kind of short. And then, um, so that's kind of, it continues. And then I have just kind of some random sheets back here. Then I got um, some sheets that actually have been really helpful for um, breaking down like the chapter. So knowing what the setting is, the character and initial situation, um, the internal conflict, the external conflict, um, the story beats. So these are key events or moments that occur in each chapter. Um, any additional uh, uh, um, items, so subplots, secondary characters, um, sensory details, and ending hook. So those are the kind of things to make sure you have in every chapter. And then I got her great scenes um, to go through. And then I just got some blank pages from a old, um, well, actually, I guess it's a planner I just wasn't using anymore. And then we got my November tab. And then I have it starting with, right, these are the daily sheets um, for November. And then it goes into December. So I have all that. So how I'm using these pages are going to be my scenes. So when it comes to Monday the 4th, right, whenever I'm starting to write, I'm going to go through um, like this list here. Okay, what's my setting? What's my character and my initial situation for that chapter? What's my internal conflict, my external conflict? Um, what are some... Um, the beats of that chapter. So, right, make sure there's action, dialogue, introspection, um, and build them out, right? Scene and sequel, action, reaction. Um, so that's what these pages here is just all about, just write note, writing notes. And I actually have a little thing on the Franklin Planner back here. Um, but that's kind of an overview of what I have in my B6 Discbound plotting planner.